Welcome back to my shop, Rob from Woodsy Summercraft here. I'm doing um, a voiceover for this particular video. I didn't talk during filming, so I thought I would try this for a change. Um, I've mounted a piece of maple onto the lathe, the crotch section, um, and I'm planning on doing a live edge with it. So the bark side is initially on a face plate on, on the uh, Headstock. As you can see, I'm using the Ellsworth bowl gouge and the flute. I'm trying to uh, flute is in the direction of the cut, and I'm trying to ride the bevel around the piece of wood while it's bouncing around because it's not a perfect blank. It's one that I cut myself from a log. Just a bit of shear scraping and now I'm riding the bevel to make the bottom of the bowl flat. So pull cuts with shear scraping and push cuts with riding the bevel. Trying to get around that corner. And when I get to the edge, I go in the opposite direction. I'm trying to maintain the bark on the edge of the bowl so I don't want to go into the bark and potentially blow it out. I'm trying to ride the bevel as best I can and have the bevel contacting the wood to support the cut. And a little bit of shear scraping right in the bevel. I do a combination of both. Shear scraping gets rid of a lot of those tool marks that you might get. And it gives you nice fine shavings and eliminates a lot of the tear out. As you can see on the back of my hand, is very fine shavings. Now this is a crotch section, like I said, so I've got some Starbond medium thick black super glue, and I put that into the uh, bark inclusion in that crotch section. So I fill that up as best I can, and then I use uh, there was a little bit of a crack there too because of the. Uh, Hith from that branch. So I just put some CA in there as well. And then I use the Starbond accelerator. And I actually let this sit for a few hours. And then I remounted it and shear scraped the bottom just to clean it up and around the side. Nice gentle cuts. Now I marked the mortise and I'm using the wood parting tool just to make my initial cut. Then I grab my ball gouge and I put some of that material from the center. I know you can't see it very well there. That's my ball gouge. And then I take my and I just create a nice flat surface and, and the dovetail for the jaws. So I've sanded it down to 320 now, I didn't show you that, but now I'm going to go ahead with my usual process to finish it. First of all, cleaning any dust and dirt out of the grain. I don't want that under my finish. If you leave that on the wood and you don't clean it, then that will be under your finish. So now I go ahead with the sanding sealer, which is a shellac based sanding sealer, and I put three or four coats of that on, make sure it's fully sealed, and I allow it to dry between. 
and then I use Yorkshire Grit Original. So I play that all over and then work that in and that will bring me up to my uh, 1000 Grit equivalent. You can see the cracks where the black C CA glue, the Starbond Super Glue is. They also have a brown super glue and the clear. And you can see the crack in the bark. I think I end up removing the bark in the end after all said and done. And slow speed and gradually bring the speed up and I work the shaker in. I just released a video of a fin the finishing process that I use basically on everything. Putting that in with a clean paper towel to remove all the residue. More difficult to finish a live edge bowl because of the, uh, the live edge is coming around quite difficult to not get hurt, so you have to be very careful. I move on to the microfine, the Yorkshire grip microfine, and I do the same process. Gives me a mu much finer finish, foundation for a finish, this is all eliminating a lot of the dry sanding which is, uh, which is nice because you don't want that fine sawdust in the air and in the workshop for that matter. Now I move on to the finishing process with Hampshire Sheen Food and Toy Safe Gloss. This is uh, from England, imported from Martin Saban Smith in the UK. I apply a small amount all over the entire thing. And I start working it. Again, it's more difficult because of the live edge. Try not to get your fingers where they shouldn't be. But I'm quite satisfied with the results. Now I'm going to move in with my bowl gouge, my freshly sharpened bowl gouge. And I've got the towel stuck up for initial support just, just to get started. Start removing that bark because I know some of that's going to fly. My fleet is closed facing the direction of travel. I'm trying to cut on center. Try to be careful of that edge. Now I've removed the tailstock. A little bit more light on the subject. the bevel at the edge. Here you can see I'm making a pyramid basically in the center of the bowl, keeping the center of the bowl for support while I'm removing the, uh, the edge, the rim. Concentrating on that rim, keep 
on checking it. It's quite difficult to see while it's spinning. Again with the flute closed, right in the bevel, facing the direction of travel, trying to replicate the outside shape on the inside without getting too thin. Okay, so I've got the bowl gouge here facing the other direction and nibbling away at the middle. Nibbling away, removing that nice and slowly. Right now it's quite high, so I don't want to drag the bevel across that because it could throw the bowl off the leg. Ask me how I know. Now I'm starting to work my way down, I can start writing the bell across that nice flat surface. Keep in mind where the edge of that bowl is. It would, it would cut you quite badly if you put your hand in the wrong place. Keeping my hand on the right side of the uh, tool rest. I'm continually checking it. I don't want to go through the bottom of the bowl. A sharp tool is very critical. And again, I had to add some more CA glue in that inclusion and turn that away. I think this is where I remove the bark and I'm just cleaning up that edge. Okay, so it is sanded to 320, so I'm just cleaning it now with denatured alcohol to get any dust out of there. Again, I used the Starbond CA into those inclusions, the medium black CA. Now I'm sealing the bowl. There's a lot of end grain in there because of the crotch section. The grain goes in different directions. And then I can go ahead and use Yorkshire grit. And then have shoe sheen. Give me a nice glossy finish. And thanks for watching. This really was just a piece to turn to pass some time. Um, as many of you guys are probably also in self isolation. Um, I am not sick, touch wood, yet anyway, um, but I'm trying to stay safe. Um, as many of you guys know, my youngest son has got cystic fibrosis, which is a disease of the lungs and the pancreas. So really, I'm trying to protect him. Um, it's very important that we all do our part during this uh, COVID virus outbreak. Um, so... I'm going to try and do my part. I'm staying home. My wife's staying home. While we're here at home, what can we do? Maybe I can make some more videos. That's what I'm going to try and do. We'll see. Um, I have a few projects in mind. I also have a lathe giveaway coming up very soon. 
it is still in the box upstairs. Thank you very much to King Industrial for supplying me with that lathe. It is a new product that they've come out with. It is, uh, well, I'm not going to show you. I'm going to release a video very shortly and it is going to be a demonstration and a giveaway. Um, hopefully something to look forward to after the COVID virus outbreak is well and truly gone and wiped out. Um, I just hope everybody stays safe. Stay in your workshop, make something, be productive, stay sane, and uh, I'll hope to see you again soon for another wood turning project. So I'll leave a couple of photographs at the end. You guys take care now. Thanks for watching. Bye now.